Thank you, Scott. Now I can actually see you. I'm on my little box, boxer box that I carry around here. And uh, I want to tell you, it's just a delight to be with you. Uh, and I'm going to tell uh, Senator Inhofe, it's a little warm, because he's the one who says there's no global warming, but it's a little warm. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have to laugh because my friends who grew up in San Francisco, when it gets to be 65, they start fainting. <laughs> you know, oh my God, it's so hot. Um, so what I thought I'd do today in the little time that I have is go over first the big picture and then talk about this Water Resources Development Act that's actually coming to the floor Monday, which is huge. <laughs> When I write my book on how a bill really becomes a law, I'll explain to you why in this kind of atmosphere, just to get a bill on the floor of the Senate is miraculous because the, because Leader Reed, or any leader for that matter, doesn't want to go to a bill that's going to cause heartburn and contention. And as you well know, almost everything we do causes that. So if we can come to the floor with a bipartisan bill it's hugely important. So the committee that I chair has the authority over the environment and public works. And someone who somehow matched those two things together is very fortunate for me to choose that committee when you got me to the Senate, at least some of you did, in 1993. <laughs> and because of my seniority now chairing that committee, it's two things that I love to do. I love to save the environment, and I love to build public works. <laughs> and yeah, it's nice, a nice combo. Now, on the environment side, it's very contentious. And my world today is defending and protecting the landmark legacy laws, the Clean Air Act, the Safe Drinking Water Act, the Superfund Act, um, all those things that we really try. And to, to defend, frankly, the ability of the Environmental Protection Agency to go after greenhouse gas emissions, which the Supreme Court said they clearly have the right to do after wasting eight years in court. But now uh, my Republican friends, with a little Democratic help, not that much, are trying to repeal that. So in the, when it comes to the environment, it's kind of like, can I stop the rollbacks? So far, we've been able to do that. And it's sad because I want to move forward because what we're seeing here today is just the prelude of things that will come and worse things that will come. Hurricane and Superstorm Sandy obviously is a prelude of what's already happening and the cost of that's enormous and I'll get to that when I talk about WERDA. So, um, so I start off by saying thank you for your support in allowing me to get there and be there and be able to chair this incredibly important committee. Then I was also picked to chair the Ethics Committee. That's a whole other topic, which we'll talk about another day. Um, but the, uh, the highway bill that we were able to pass with, with the help of a lot of you here and organizations represented here was a very good stopgap for two years while we figure out how we're gonna fund the Highway Trust Fund because there's good news and bad news on the Highway Trust Fund. I mean, the bad news is we're not collecting enough money to do what we have to do to just keep pace with our needs, our highway needs and our transportation needs. Uh, the good news is, the reason is, people are driving more fuel efficient cars and that's sparing the air and it's helping us get carbon pollution out of the air, but it's a problem. So after I do WERDA, I'm actually going to a quote unquote retreat to find out how are we going to work across the party aisle to fund our highway and transportation programs? And if you have any ideas on that, please call me because it's always difficult to come up with new funding sources in, in this time when so many people just say, no, no, I don't want to hear about it. Well, we have to hear about it. You know you're the business community. The fact is if you can't move people and you can't move goods, you can't compete in this economy. And uh, it's essential we have to do it. So let me, let me just tell you a little bit about the WERDA bill, and then hopefully I will have time to take a few questions. Um, so Monday we get to the floor. Uh, we will put 
the Senator Vitter and I on the floor uh, a substitute bill because, again, when I write my book on how a bill becomes a law, you get it out of the committee, then everyone in the Senate notices they have a problem. <laughs> and then they come to the committee chairman, they come to the ranking member, and they say, uh-oh, I'm going to stop this bill if you don't fix A, B, C, and D, and it goes from A to Z. So you have to sit down with them and figure it out. So it's S601, and we've been working on it behind the scenes for uh, several weeks. Now, I don't know if you're aware of this, but do you know what the American Society of Civil Engineers rated the nation's infrastructure? Anybody have a, what? It was D plus. You're very close. Hardly a grade to be proud of. It's awful. It's crazy. And I think the president was saying, when we look at our airports, I, I think he said that we were not even in the top 35 of the world. What has gone wrong? Well, what has gone wrong is we don't have investment policies. And we have spent a lot you know, on wars. We have spent, we continue to spend a lot on wars and hopefully that's coming to an end. And we just need to rebuild this nation. We really have to do that. And we have an overseas war account that is flush with a lot of money, close to a trillion dollars, and the wars are coming to an end. And many of us are saying, bring that money home and invest it in America. And I gotta tell you, there's a lot of push for that from the people. We want to invest in this great nation. We have to. Look at the jobs report. It wasn't bad, it was good, the stock market loves it today. But the fact is, this is amazing that we're doing this well given the fact that we're retrenching every single thing we do. Starting with the sequester, which is stupid. And I apologize, I actually voted for the damn thing because I thought it would be so onerous we'd never go through with it. I apologize for being not smart. Uh, you know, that's the worst thing that a politician ever has to say is I'm sorry. It is hard, it's hard for us. <laughs> but I never thought this would happen. And it's indiscriminate, so we fixed for five months the airport problem. I'm glad we fixed that, okay? Five months we fixed it. And meanwhile, 70,000 kids are getting kicked out of Head Start, and people can't get their chemotherapy drugs, and, and people can't get their HIV testing, and women can't get mammograms. Where's the outrage? This is dumb, and it's not necessary. So if we bring the money home from that overseas account, we could restore every penny of the sequester plus. And right now, there doesn't seem to be the will to do it. It's going to be a drag on this economy. Uh, you know, in the olden days, I was an economics major. In the olden days, we knew when things are tough, you prime the pump. But you certainly don't make matters worse by taking so much out of the economy. It makes no sense whatsoever. And if we could unleash some funding at the federal level, match with what the private sector is doing, Believe me, that deficit would go down fast. It's already going down. When Obama was president, he inherited 1.2 trillion. Now it's down to about 700 billion, still too high. But we're getting that deficit down. So we're moving this bipartisan legislation. It will uh, promote investments through the program of the US Army Corps of Engineers for our ports, which have to be dredged, navigation channels, levees, and other flood protection. Anybody here from Sacramento area? Then, hi. You know how big this is. You know, I have looked at, God forbid, what would happen to Sacramento if they had an event like Katrina. And I say this knowing it is a fact. It would make Katrina look bad, but it would be far worse because we have so many more people, so many more businesses, and below sea level situations. So this is a huge bill for all of California. It's an enormously important bill for our capital here in California, that's for sure. Now, here's what our challenge was. There's no earmarks anymore. Another very dumb thing. Why do I say that? You elect me and you tell me what your needs are. I go back 
look at those needs and fight for them. Now I can't do it. Now I have to call and beg the administration because they do all the earmarks. So tell me, how smart is that? Not smart. So I'm one of the few people who say that ban on earmarks is absurd. Now, private earmarks, absolutely. There's no place for that. But not public sector earmarks. So how did we get around it and do a bill? We said that our bill automatically authorizes every project for which the Army Corps has completed a chief's report. And that is lots and lots and lots of projects. That's good. Then in the future, we say, Local entities, like some of you represent here, go to the Corps and make your case for a study. And if you could persuade the Corps, and I guess I get involved, write a little letter, make a little phone call, they will decide whether your case is meriting a chief's report. And once that chief's report gets authorized, that program is authorized. You still have, we still have to get the monies appropriated. Which leads me to the Harbor Maintenance Trust Fund which should not be on the budget. It's ridiculous. People are paying into the Harbor Maintenance Trust Fund. It has a surplus of $7 billion, And we are trying to say, don't use it for other things. We're losing the argument. We're losing the argument. But we'll get some more money out of it. But it's a classic fight between the appropriators who are dying on the vine because there's no federal funds, and the authorizers who say, this is important. There's a backlog of projects. So we do tackle the Harbor Maintenance Trust Fund in this bill, and we won't be able to get it as far as we want, but we will make progress, and we will have, hopefully, more funding for these needs. Now, nationwide, seaports support 13 million jobs, 650 billion in personal income, according to the American Association of Port Authorities. And here, in California, I keep asking you these things like, you're good students, I know you are. Do you know how much, what percent of all containerized cargo destined for the continental U.S. passes through our ports in California? 45%. Yes. The man goes to the head of the class. 45% on the money. All of the goods that come to, to this country, 45% of them come through our port. So this bill is critical to our ports. And, um, we will increase investment in our, in our ports. So this growing surplus, quote unquote, you know, it really does belong to the ports. But the fight goes on, and so far, you know, we're not going to be able to even get a bill to the floor if it causes this dire fight between the appropriators and the authorizers. So we come up with a compromise, and we get them to agree to spend more money. Um, now. I also do something else in this bill, which I think you'll like. Do you remember, how many of you remember the highway bill? Were involved in that a little bit. Raise your hand if you worked on it a little. Some of you did. We created a program called TIFIA. And the idea of TIFIA is, follow me here, it's a leveraging program. So if people voted a quarter of cent sales tax for transportation, because there's a steady stream of funding behind that, the feds can upfront all the money and know that they're not going to lose anything, and you get to go fast. It came to me, this idea from uh, Mayor Villaraigosa and his allies in Los Angeles. His allies were the Chamber of Commerce and the labor unions. It was beautiful. So we put that into the highway bill, and now I've come up with this WIFIA for water infrastructure financing, and so we model it after TIFIA. It's a lot smaller, because we were really able to get a billion which will leverage to 30 billion in the highway bill. This is a lot smaller because we're starting it, but it will invest in critical wastewater, drinking water, and flood control infrastructure enhancement. So if you pass uh, a little tax to help you with your water infrastructure, again, you could come to us and you were gonna build it in 10 years or 20, we could build it right up front with you. Um, so we all know about flood drifts and extreme weather. For the first time, what we do in this bill is say, after an extreme weather event involving water, that the Corps is authorized to move in and study it and come up with a plan to avert it. Otherwise, all you get if after an emergency is a cleanup. We want a cleanup, but we also want a plan for how to 
build to hardening our infrastructure, the things we have to do to avert the disaster in the future. So we have an extreme weather title. I couldn't call it climate change because then I couldn't get any votes from the Republicans. So I call it extreme weather title. And it's okay with me. I don't care. A rose is a rose. So as long as we get the job done, if I have to call it something else, I'll call it something else. So um, for the first time, the Corps will get in there, conduct immediate assessments of the affected watersheds, identify and construct small flood control restoration programs right after an extreme event. Um, we have broad support for the bill, which in this day and age is great. 160 groups representing millions of workers and businesses wrote in support of it. And every minute of every day I'm on the phone and I have calls to several centers from the Great Lakes who are worried about their situation. Look, in closing I'll say this. This country has many needs and the needs are not being met. I am privileged to be in one of the committees where maybe I can make some progress and move us forward. And uh, it looks good. It looks like we're gonna stand united. Now I would bet the First Amendment on the water bill will be about Syria or something else that has nothing to do with the water bill. So is the way of the Senate. We'll deal with it. We'll figure it out. But I think the fact that everybody really understands the need for this will help us get this job done. And I hope that the next couple of weeks will prove me right on this. And I want to thank many of you here who work in such a constructive way uh, to bring together you know, all sides of the aisle and different organizations to help us move these infrastructure projects forward. The private sector cannot do this. They cannot be responsible for this. We have to compete in a world that's highly competitive and we cannot lose sight of that. So, you know, yes, we want the strongest military in the world, we'll always have it, but yes, we better understand without the strongest infrastructure, we're going to lose out at the end of the day. So thank you for inviting me and allowing me to share these thoughts with you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Senator Boxer is willing to answer a couple of questions. Before she does it, I just want to say her efforts on Senate Bill uh, 601, WERDA, is critical. Anybody who has a business in states other than California, Please have those business interests write your U.S. Senators in support of Senate Bill SO1. Are there any questions? Jim Hausner. And thank Jim Hausner for seeing it. And certainly it's been a long time since the word of 2007. And I want to appreciate your unwording support to make another word bill. California courts really want to make sure that we get as much of the HMT extended for intent purposes, plus a little equity for Ports of LA and Long Beach. However, recently, uh, Well, I hope you all understood the question. I did, which is worrisome. <laughs> HMT, yeah. But here's the situation. It is true that some of our ports really do need the dredging. But our largest port, LA Long Beach, that does, they don't use the, for dredging. They need other uses. And in our bill, we absolutely allow the fund to be used for these new uses, which is a huge breakthrough for our ports and other ports in a similar situation. Um, let me just make a comment about uh, the house. Well, let me not. Uh, no, no, I, I can't. Um, they don't seem to do much except things that will never pass the Senate or get a signature. But once in a while, they do the right thing and they take up our bill and pass it. They've done it several times now. They did in a fiscal crisis, they took our bill and passed it. They did it on violence against women, they took up our bill and passed it. And my hope is, once we get this done, this is a very fair bill. In my, my bill, I've got to balance the needs of the eastern ports and the western ports just like they have to in the house. And Schuster, I mean, has a lot of Californians in 
uh, the House and on his committee. I like him. I get along with him really well. So wh what I would suggest is instead of worrying about Schuster now, put that worry aside for the moment. Let's get our bill done, and then let's urge him to get behind our bill. I think it'd be the easier thing for him. He's, he's a new chairman. We're, we're working hard on this long-term funding for highways, and I think there's a good chance he may take it up. And the fact is the Harbor Maintenance Trust Fund is not going to come, is not going to become free overnight. We're going to, eat, you know, over the years get more from it. So I wouldn't worry about the House bill at this moment. He hasn't even drawn up a bill. He hasn't even had a hearing on a bill. And I think our push should be if we get a great vote on our bill, which we might, we could get 70 plus people, maybe 80. I think we have the momentum not to get into a big fight with the House, but to say, Bill, Bill, why don't you just take the bill up and pass it? And I think there's a good, good chance of that. But I hear your worry, and you have a right to worry, but let's get it through the Senate first, then let's have a strategy. You know, I've learned again, you got to focus on what's in front of you, because just because it all looks good doesn't mean it's going to happen. This thing could be derailed anyway from Sunday. Somebody could put a gun thing on it. Somebody could put a Siri thing on it. Somebody could have put a Boston Marathon Miranda rights thing on. The Senate is the Senate is the Senate. It's nuts. People put things, extraneous things on bills, and you have to deal with them, try to get them out of the way. And so I would appreciate if you all focus on the Senate, getting this done, and then we'll have a strategy about what to do about the House. Ellen has a question. Hi, Ellen Hi, with your help for the last several word we've been getting at the very important need to beneficially reuse dredge material. And that's really the name of the game. Yeah. Turning back. We, we are moving in that direction. Every single court process sure. information has got that in it. Does, Werda, does this word have any statements about that, or is it primarily through you know, the, the funding? I mean, we don't go really into what you do with the dredge material, so because that was taken care of in the past. If it's clean, if it's good, it can go. I mean, it, we don't have anything specifically in it. So current law would apply. Anybody else? No? Okay. I'm, no, this crowd's not intimidated. But let me just say thank you so much for this wonderful turnout, this opportunity to, to meet with you and enjoy this incredibly beautiful place and um, California's the not that I'm prejudiced is, is is one of the most dynamic and wonderful places and I will tell you this whether it's immigration reform whether it's word whether it's a highway bill there's a lot at stake for our state so just know that I'm in there fighting for the interests the public interests of our communities and of our state and thank you so much for inviting me here today thank you very much Thank you very much, Senator Boxer.